a so-called black man. These bones been dry for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, Tyler Perry, all of them. Tyler Perry fooled the whole black community. He got us to do what RuPaul couldn't get us to do. He got us to do what no one else, and he came up with an ingenious way to do it. He, he and he alone got black folk to accept drag. And you know how he did it? He did it through laughter, through humor. He got us to accept drag queens. That's all Madea is, is a drag queen. So, and you know what he did? He went to churches. He went to churches. Went to a place where he could go where you could almost guarantee folk ain't going to be thinking. They won't reason. They won't, won't nobody say, wait a minute. This man can't find an overweight black woman. To play that part, you can't find a fat sister in the black church. You got to pretend to be her. You can look at it, you can I mean you can blind blind for yourself and look in any direction and find a Madea. The next time. I'm chasing the spiritual back. I'm not going, I said, I'm just trying to make it. I was reading a friend. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, it is time to wake up. Wake the hell up. It's time to wake up and know who you are. So in this video, we will continue to explain Romans 9. We will be breaking down each scripture in Romans 9. This video will be Romans 9 and 3. So let's get right into it. Bible study. Romans 3 and 4. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou as mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, you know, we're going to use the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's words to break down Romans 9 and 3. Wake up, my people, to the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel. It is time to come back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and come out of Christianity and any other religion that you might be partaking in, participating in, excuse me. Let's get some understanding of Romans 9 and 3. Romans 9 and 3. Let's go to Romans 9 and 3 and get some understanding. It's time to wake up, my people. It's time to wake up. And who said better than Romans 9 and 3? Romans 9 and 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Yeah, so, you know, we got to understand who Paul's kinsmen are. 
according to the flesh. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, who are the children of Israel, let's see who is Paul's kinsmen according to the flesh. Let's see who his kinsmen are according to the flesh. We're going to go to Romans 11 and 1, and we're going to be reading 1 through 4. Romans 11 and 1, 1 through 4. We got to know who is his kinsman. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am a Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Whoa. So that means Paul is an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. That's what he just said. Romans 11 and 2, God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Well, you know not what the scriptures say in Isaiah, how he make intercession of God against Israel, saying, Romans 11 and 3, Lord, they have killed the prophets and dig down the altars, and I am left alone and they seek my life. Romans 11 and four. But what said the answer of the Lord unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Yes, 7,000 men did not bow. That he didn't allow to fall into the wickedness of this world. He kept our minds strong. I thank you, Father, for the line that you allowed me to come through. Thank you, Father. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel, I know that Christianity teaches that all nations would be grafted into the stick. Let's see what the book of Ezekiel says about the stick. So let's go to the stick and see who's going to be grafted in because it should be Paul's kinsman according to the flesh. We're going to be in Ezekiel 37 and 11. And we're going to be reading 11 through 20. 37, 11 through 20. We're going to get some understanding. We're going to get some understanding. Ezekiel 37 and 11. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Cut off from our heritage. We don't even know who we are. We're around here calling ourselves black, African-American, colored, nigger, and any other by word they have put on us, not realizing that we are the people. Ezekiel 37 and 12, therefore prophesy, say unto them, thus said the Lord, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you unto the land of Israel. Yeah, he's gonna retrieve us. He's going to retrieve us again. He's going to retrieve us again. Ezekiel 37 and 13. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Ezekiel 37 and 14. And you shall be, uh, 
and you shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. Yes, he gonna speak it and perform it. Ezekiel 37 and 15, the word of the Lord came again unto me saying, Ezekiel 37 and 16. Moreover, the, the son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Joseph, I mean for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ethram, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. It's still all the children of Israel. Ezekiel 37 and 17. Thirty-seven and seventeen, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thy hand. Yes, come back, Israel. Descendants of the slave trade. It's time for us to be that one stick again. Ezekiel thirty-seven and eighteen, and when thou children of the people shall speak unto thee, saying. Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Ezekiel 37 and 19. Say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ethan, and the tribes of Israel, his follow, fellow, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. Yes, when he retrieve us, we all are gonna come back and just be the children of Israel. No more division. Ezekiel 37 and 20, and the stick whereon thou written shall be in thy hand before their eyes. Yes, and all the nations are gonna see us come back as one nation. Ah, they're going to see us come back as a nation. They're going to see us come back as a nation. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, who are the children of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, tell you who his people are. And we're going to get it in Jeremiah 30. And we're going to be reading um, Jeremiah 31 through 4. He tell us who his people are. He tell us who his people are. It's time for us to wake up and come back to our God. It is time to come back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is time to stop being ignorant of who you truly are. One through four, Jeremiah 30, one through four. It's time to wake up, my people. Jeremiah 30 and 1, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Jeremiah 30 and 2, thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. We're reading that book now. Jeremiah 30 and 3, for lo, the days come, said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, said the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. He's gonna retrieve us. Jeremiah 30 and four. And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah still the same flesh, the same kinsmen, 
that belong to Paul in Romans 9. Ain't nothing changed. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, who are the children of Israel, we all know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made the first covenant with the children of Israel when he had Moses instruct Pharaoh to let his people go. We all know that. Let's go to Jeremiah 31, and we're going to be reading 31, Jeremiah 31 and 31 through 34. Ain't nothing changed. But let's see, this is the new covenant, 31 through 34. Nothing changed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for waking us. Thank you, Father, for allowing your spirit to come back in the planet. Thank you. Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Jeremiah 31 and 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. Yes, yes, he was a husband unto us. <sighs> Jeremiah 31 and 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their heart, and I will be to be I and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Nothing has changed. He's gonna give us our heritage back. We're gonna know that we are his people. We're not going to be calling ourselves at the two continents must have only. He's going to send his son to retrieve us. Jeremiah 31 and 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and will remember their sins no more. Yes, and this prophecy has not taken place yet because we are still out here trying to teach the word of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when he come and retrieve us, all are going to know. All are going to know. All are going to know who we serve and who his people truly are, according to the flesh. Wake up, my people, to the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel, no matter what they say in Christianity, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only showed his word to the children of Israel. Let's get it, though. In Psalms 147, 19, and 20, he only showed his word to the children of Israel. He only showed his word to the children of Israel. This book was written by us, for us, and to us. 147, 19, and 20. Psalms 147 and 19, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Psalms 147 and 20, he have not dealt so with any nation and for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Yes, they have not known the judgments yet, but they will know for what they did to the apple of his eye. 
who are the descendants of the slave trade, the mistreatment that they have done to us, they will know our God. Our God. Like, like, like they say, when the son of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob return, there's going to be blood up to the horse's bridle. Yeah, he ain't going to be friendly. He wasn't friendly when he was on the planet the first time. Christianity just teach y'all that bull itch. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade who are the children of Israel, I don't know what Christianity is teaching, but evidently nothing. Because that's what the one thing that preacher said was what would be a better place to fool the people than in the churches where they are not thinking? He said it, that they are not thinking in the churches. They are not thinking because he's not putting knowledge in them. And these churches are not giving you the knowledge of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made the first covenant with the children of Israel and will be making the second covenant with the children of Israel, not all nations. Let's get it, though. In the New Testament, we're going to go to Hebrews 8 and 7, and we're going to be reading 7 through 10. Hebrews 8 and 7, 7 through 10. We're going to get it, and we're going to get some understanding, and I pray that you guys are getting some knowledge and some wisdom of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's words. Seven through 10. Hebrews eight and seven. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then shall no place have been sought for the second. Sound like we just read this, huh? Hebrews 8 and 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Covenant is still going to be with us. It's still going to be with us only. Hebrews 8 and 9. Not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord, allowed us to go into bondage to all nations. Allowed us to go into bondage to all nations. Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Yes, when he retrieve us, we're going to be his people again. We're going to retreat. We are going to receive our heritage back and everyone is going to know who the descendants of the slave trade truly are. And they're going to understand why we went into bondage. They are going to understand why we went into bondage. And they're going to pay. Have no one pay for slavery. Have no one pay for slavery. There's been no punishment put on the nations for taking us into bondage. No one has paid them. No one has stood up. And there has been no reparation for the descendants of the slaves. None. Because they can't pay for a punishment that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob put us in. But they will pay. Like he said, the ground cannot be cleansed but by the blood of him who shed it. The ground cannot be cleansed, but by the blood of him who shed it. So like I said before, 
It will be blood up to the horse's bridle. Wake up, my people. To the descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. Shalom to the Israelites who are the descendants of the slave trade. I'm chasing the spiritual back. I'm not going, I said, I'm just trying to make it. I was reading and praying for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Yeah, I had to change my route. When you be speaking the truth, they don't want to listen, so they try to close your mouth. But it's a difference when you was not doing the talking. The most had a shot at me, I like, well, drip so hard, no gunner. Praising the Lord, yeah, you know I'm gonna. I'm rapping Judah, came from the trenches to keep it up, but that's a jungle. Trials and tribulations is not new to me because I came from the struggle. It's real a nation and carrying the kingdom. It's just a bank, I can't fumble. Ooh, they trying to ride the wave. The kingdom not far away. You gotta repent today, yeah that's true Yeah I go to work for my people, hell nah we ain't equal The Bible had made me a lethal, weapon Got my foot on they neck, I ain't letting up Read the Bible, other people ain't fed enough My cup keep on filling and filling up This a maritime, so there's no need to rush Israel is rising, yeah that is the game You think you messing with us, you seeing things We do this for the Lord, don't care about the fame That's me, child, yeah I gon' say our name Hands up, the kingdom is coming Hey, gotta endure, cause we cannot do no more running Wake up, my people. If you don't know your nationality, you don't know your purpose. If you don't know your purpose, it's impossible to feel the things in life that you are put here to accomplish. Nigger, color, African-American, black. No, we are the Israelites. I'm going to be reading Matthews 26, 7 through 13. Matthews 26, 7 through 13. Matthews 26 and 7. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Matthew 
Matthew 26 and 8. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? Matthew 26 and 9. For this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Matthew 26 and 10. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye this woman? For she have wrapped a good work upon me. Matthew 26 and 11. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. Matthew 26 and 12. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Matthew 26 and 13. Very I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for a memorial of her. Wake up, my people. Come back to the Most High the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the descendants of the slave trade, we are the Israelites. We are still living in the land that our ancestors became slaves. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, a great place to start reading. With that, we say hallelujah.